So, if you still haven't made your fortune, hmm. don't be too sad. There are huge amounts of money out there longing to be discovered. Look at this humble Chinese villager. At 51 years old, he accidentally made 4 million won, which is over $600,000, without doing anything special. The thing is, he and his son just found it in a pig while doing their basic chores they would do every single day. The stone they found inside the pig is called bezoar, and I bet you've never heard of it before. It's not common in the West, but it's a big deal in traditional Chinese medicine. If you look at this stone, you may think it's ew. This 4-inch long, 2.7-inch wide treasure is hairy and looks a bit gross at first glance, and it doesn't get better. After discovering the stone, the father and the son took it to Shanghai for an appraisal, and it cost them around $6,000. But still, the initial expenses don't seem so big, considering they're a mere 1% of what that stone is worth. Now, not everything in an animal's belly is going to make you rich. Only the gallbladder <laughs> stuff is real gold. I know that women can buy themselves flowers and write their names in the sand, but let's face it, women just love it when we offer them fancy bouquets. Still, today, it's much easier to do than it was in the 17th century. Back then, an average Joe would have to slave his way to afford just one flower. Somewhere around the 1630s, there was a tulip mania, where tulip bulbs cost more than gold. OK, the price wasn't real. It was a speculative bubble way before all the other economic drama we see today. We just haven't learned our lesson yet. Back at that time, a single tulip bulb was sold for more than what a skilled artisan made in an entire year. And it wasn't just any tulip bulb. We're talking about bulbs with fancy colors and patterns that were rare and sought after. The tulip market was like the stock market at the time, with traders making deals in taverns and signing contracts with each other. It was all about supply and demand. And just like with any bubble, prices eventually crashed in February 1637, leaving everyone with empty pockets, scratching their heads, and feeling ill. Meanwhile, speaking of feeling under the weather, back in 15th century Europe, people turned to Egyptian mummies for relief from headaches, stomach issues, and even more serious conditions modern medicine still can't beat today. Embalmed bodies were thought to have some magical healing powers. But why did folks eat mummies in the first place? Well, it all started with a mix-up in translations. There was a substance called mumia that was considered super valuable for its healing properties. But when Western Europeans got wind of it through letters from other nations, they mistakenly thought it came from Egyptian mummies. This led to a whole fashion of medical mummy eating. People believed that consuming parts of mummies could cure all sorts of ailments. So they started raiding Egyptian tombs and selling mummies like hotcakes. Demand was so high that some shady characters even started making fake mummies out of… Trust me, you don't want to know it. I'll leave it to your imagination. But you can write your ideas in the comments. Fast forward to the Victorian era, and the enthusiasm with mummies was at an all-time high. Egyptomania was in full swing, with mummy unwrapping parties becoming a popular pastime. It wasn't until the late 19th century that the use of mumia finally fizzled out. One day, a dead sperm whale washed up on a beach in La Palma, Spain, and a professor was sent on a mission to crack the case of the animal's demise. Amidst crashing waves and the massive carcass, he stumbled upon a surprising revelation. A hefty 21-pound stone hmm. stuck at its intestines. But this was no ordinary rock. Valued at 500,000 euros, which is over $545,000, it turned out to be ambergris, also known as floating gold. Legend has it that this funky substance can be found floating in the sea or rarely washed up on beaches. It was discovered in the 1800s. It's actually formed from the indigestible bits sperm whales gobble up while feasting on squid, like their beaks. Over time, perhaps years, these bits clump together in their intestines, almost like a kidney stone, to create this valuable lump of ambergris. Now, you may ask yourself why a sperm whale's excretion costs way, way more than your house. But the answer is simple. It just smells good. OK, it's not good. It smells divine. The aroma ranges from sweet to musky tones, and perfume makers go bananas for this stuff as it helps fragrances last longer. 
The more a substance called amberin it contains, the pricier it gets. And the color matters too. Black means less amberin, while white packs a punch. Cheaper options opt for synthetic alternatives, but top-notch perfumes go for the real deal. While using ambergris in perfumes is a no-go in the US, the French still adore this magical ingredient. By the way, over $500,000 is not a limit here. Some lucky fishers once scored a chunk of ambergris worth $1.5 million in the Gulf of Aden. Those sperm whales sure have some fancy intestines, huh? Now, next time you go grocery shopping, do not complain about prices, okay? At least you can easily afford any spice out there. Your great-great, many times, great-grandfather somewhere in the Middle Ages wouldn't believe you that cinnamon and black pepper can be that affordable. Spices were worth their weight in gold and gems, driving the economy like nobody's business. Back in the day, food went bad faster than milk in the sun, so spices were a hot commodity to cover up that not-so-fresh flavor. European nations wanted to control the spice trade, which led to crazy expeditions to India and other Asian lands. The Portuguese, Dutch, French, Spanish, and English were all fighting for spice domination, setting up shop and making a mint along the way. Now, on to the exact prices. Back in 1393, saffron was as pricey as a horse, ginger as much as a sheep, and mace as costly as a cow. And a pound of nutmeg was worth seven fat oxen in medieval Germany. That black pepper that we take for granted today wasn't just for seasoning. Peppercorns were actually used as currency in Europe. Towns kept their books in pepper. Brides got pepper as part of their dowry, and some landlords even accepted peppercorn rent. Um, may I cover my utility bills this month with this fancy packet of cinnamon, sir? No? What? You think I should go out and get an actual job? <laughs> okay. Hey, that's a nice t-shirt, but does it come in purple? What? It'll cost 10 times more in this color? Now, this one may sound insane to modern people, spoiled by the variety we've got today. But if the shopping malls we know today existed many centuries ago, that would be a common thing. Making Tyrian purple dye was such a chore that it cost a pretty penny. It's rumored that purple dye was as valuable as silver. This led to purple fabrics becoming symbols of status, with fancy laws dictating who could wear them. Big-shot Roman leaders flaunted their importance by wearing white togas trimmed in Tyrian purple, while victorious generals rocked the grandest toga of them all – solid purple with shiny gold embellishments. Fast forward to the 4th century, and it was basically illegal for anyone in Rome to sport Tyrian purple except for the emperor. That's how exclusive it was. In fact, saying someone donned the purple came to mean they became emperor. The Byzantine Empire took tight control over Tyrian purple production, using it solely for their fancy silk fabrics. Oh, fun fact, if a royal kid was born, they were literally born in the purple. But I digress. Tyrian purple may have been worn by the nobility, but the origins of this fancy dye are far from being noble. It came from the slimy stuff of three different sea snails. Each snail made a unique hue. One of them gave us a bluish purple, another one rocked a reddish purple, and there was even a snail that could help make a vibrant red dye. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.